Hey again. So part two on leadership in the body of Christ. Um, just, you know, the Bible talks about if you want to lead, you should first serve. And I think the world is different, right? The world is like all about jockeying for position and climbing on other people and proving yourself and trying to climb, climb up the ladder of success. In the body of Christ, Jesus said, last shall be first and first shall be last, and he who wants to lead shall first serve. So anyways, I can just tell you my own testimony is um, in 94, I got spirit-filled, um, rededicated my life to the Lord, and was a singer, and so started singing in worship team, and then learning about ministry and protocol in worship, and then was invited to a women's prayer group where we were learning about the gifts of the Spirit. And I sat under a woman there who taught on all the gifts of the Spirit and demonstrated the gifts of the Spirit. And we all learned and grew in the giftings. Then I uh, was put with a family who used to walk closely with the prophet evangelist Lonnie Frisbee, who you probably heard of. He's, you know, in the Jesus Revelation movie. And there's three books that just came out about him. And they used to tell me about Lonnie and all the miracles, signs and wonders, and the power, and how he just completely led a walk in the Spirit. And yes, there were some struggles he had. He's very open in his books about his testimony, but he was a mighty man of God, and they would tell me all these stories. And then through hanging out with them for a few years, we did street evangelism and prayer groups, and and I learned a lot under them. Then went to another church and was eventually made a youth leader there and then on prayer team at another church, and then placed uh, as a leader of a home group, and with with oversight. Like, I didn't just jockey for any of these things and say, I want to do it. Um, they asked me. The leaders, I guess, saw my willingness to serve and must have seen some good fruit and, and willingness to serve, so they asked me to serve and to lead. So I did. And then I always submitted to the people placed in authority over me, though. And that's that's what I wanted to say is like, you know, a good leader should have some accountability. And I always think it's wise to submit to the people placed in authority over you. That's what scripture says to do. There have been times where I've been in a position where I couldn't see clearly and I wasn't sure what to do because it's like I call it the fog of war. When you're personally being attacked or there's a bunch of witchcraft or warfare around you, sometimes it's really hard to see clearly, especially when something's hitting you personally. So I love having people that are more experienced than I am in the ministry, that have been serving longer than I, that I can bounce things off of. And, and, um, and I listen to what they say. And even like my pastor of me now, he's an apostle. Even if I don't understand in the moment or I don't see what they see, I usually just do what they say because I respect and I have learned through experience that people placed in authority over you are equipped by God to see things that you can't see. It's like a shepherd. A shepherd can see further ahead of you, you know, if there's a snake or a wolf. When you're a sheep and you're just grazing in the grass, getting fed and learning and enjoying life with the Lord, that's great. But like you might miss things that the shepherd that God has placed over you is equipped to see. And they have a different perspective. And I've just seen God's faithfulness with that where he just over and over, like when I've led groups, he'll give me insight into situations and people often before other people in the group, even if they've been walking with the Lord longer. Not because I'm any better. It's because God is faithful to equip the people, the shepherds over his sheep. So the other thing is, like I said, serve. If you want to lead, you serve. I have never sought a leadership role. And yet for the past 20 years, I have been asked, will you lead this home group? Will you lead this women's group for the women's Bible study? Will you give your testimony? Will you be on prayer team? Will you be a watchman at the church because we recognize you have discernment? Will you let us know if you see anything in the church coming in? Will you be on staff? Finally, after 26 years, 27 years, I was asked last year to be on staff um, at my church in L.A. And the funny thing about that is that I was really, really resistant to it. They were asking me, you know, to be an admin assistant. And I honestly am not very gifted in admin. 
But I, it, I realized after it was such an honor because it was more about they were trusting me to take this position in the church and to be like, you know, a face of one of the people on staff there. So it's a, it's a great honor. And now they are releasing me because they see that the work I'm doing where I'm living right now, they're saying, we feel you're being called to plant a church. Now, I, I think of it more as an apostolic hub, technically speaking, than a church. It's in my home. But it is about equipping the saints. So anyways, that's the message I wanted to say is, most leaders that are really God appointed are, are just that. When you're faithful with little, you get more. When you humble yourself and seek to serve, you get exalted, you get lifted up. And it's just the truth. <laughs> and, and no leader is perfect. We all make mistakes. We can all get in the flesh. We can, we can say something the wrong way. We could be in a bad mood. We could be hungry, short, tired, whatever. That doesn't mean it's right, but you got to give people some slack. And it does say pray for your leaders. You know, all these years, I was never paid for any of those positions until this last year as an admin assistant. And it was... You know, sometimes I'd give 20, 30, 40 hours a week of my life to the church, shepherding, teaching, praying, worship leading. Mo most often it was like 40 hours a week. Never got paid. Youth pastor, media ministry leader, women's ministry leader. I never got paid. So I just want to challenge you guys, for you guys that are having a hard time respecting leaders or honoring them, you should be grateful because most of us are doing this just to help, just to serve. And it's hard. There's a lot of warfare. So the Bible admonishes us to pray for our leaders and respect those in authority over us. And it'll go well with you. And I just, you know, the mothers and fathers, just, I just want to challenge you. Unless you see bad fruit, for sure, like there's something really off in their life, like they're in major unrepentant sin or... You know, if there's something wicked that they're doing, then of course you don't follow them. Like if they tell you to go do a child sacrifice, that's a red flag. Okay, so anyways, have a good day. Just wanted to say that.